Hello, um, you're welcome to AMP2. My name is Dr. Matute, University of Arkansas PTC. Uh, this is going to be a brief illustration of the lymphatic system. First, we'll start off by briefly going through the functions of the lymphatic system. If you check the study materials that are provided to you, we could um, conveniently summarize the functions of the lymphatic system as follows. Number one, protection. The lymphatic system is protected and it shares this for it shares this function with the immune system. It shares this function with the immune system. Number two. Transportation. It said it shares this function with the circulatory system or the cardiovascular system. Number three. Absorption. It shares this function with the digestive system. Number four. Um, Lymphocytes production. So it produces lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are a group of white blood cells, and as you already know, blood cells are produced in the bone or in the skeletal or in, in the skeleton. So it shares this function with the skeletal system. So one more time, we can regroup the functions of the lymphatic system has protection, transportation, absorption, and production of lymphocytes. Now, given that the lymphatic system uh, actually carries out these four basic functions, it means that the lymphatic system could actually be described as an assist system, an assist system, because we have other organ systems in the body that are responsible for protection, transportation, absorption, and the production of, uh, of white blood cells. But given that the lymphatic system also does that, so the lymphatic system actually assists these organ systems in doing that. And the lymphatic system is one of two transport systems that we have in our bodies. The, uh, the other transport system, as you know, is to be the, to be the circulatory system. Next is the lymph node. The lymph node is the principal. The lymph node. The lymph node. The lymph node is the principal structure or organ of the lymphatic system. Principal, in the sense that um, it filters lymph, and then it also uh, destroys microorganisms before that lymph can be returned to the circulatory system. So the lymph node is the principal organ of the lymphatic system because it destroys microorganisms and also filters lymphs. That's a protective function. Now, if we are looking at a model or a diagram of a lymph node, you will, you will recognize the uh, capsular region you recognize the capsular region which is the outermost region then next the cortical region the cortical region then the medullary region So there are three main regions. If you're looking at the anatomy of the of a lymph node, we have the capsular region, which is the outermost region. Then somewhere in the middle, we have the cortical region. We can call it the cortex, and then we have the medullary region, right in the right uh, the inside the structure of the organ. Now, um, the this structure also has the lymphatic vessels attached to it. Lymphatic vessels. Also has the it 
also has the lymphatic vessels attached to it. And the lymphatic vessels, um, they are of two types. You have the ones that bring lymph into the organ and the vessels that take lymph out of the organ. The lymphatic vessels that bring lymph in, they are called the afferent. A-F-F-E-R-E-N-T. They are called the afferent lymphatic vessels. They bring lymph into the lymph node for filtration. Then the afferent, A-F-F-E-R-E-N-T, the afferent lymphatic vessels, they take filter, they take lymph that has been filtered, they take it out of the lymph node. Next, let's say something about the lymphatic vessel. Lymphatic vessel. The lymphatic vessels, they have a lot of similarities with uh, veins, which were covered before. So in other words, um, how would you recognize a lymphatic vessel? You're going to have thin one, large lumen, it's going to be valve, and it's going to be a low pressure vessel. So they are four characteristics. There are four characteristics of uh, lymphatic vessels. They are, they are thin wall, they have a large lumen, and they are valve, and they are, they are low pressure vessels. These are characteristics. These are characteristics that we've actually mentioned before for blood vessels, specifically. The now, um, let's look at these models right here, and then see if we can identify some of the major organs or structures of the lymphatic system. So let's begin with the inguinal nodes. Here they are. These are the inguinal nodes. They're kind of greenish right here. These are the inguinal nodes. And then um, the, um, the, the lymphatic vessels are coming off the inguinal node. So this is an inguinal node right here. They are greenish. And then the vessels, they are whitish, they are coming out of the inguinal node. So, inguinal node, which is an example of a lymph node, and then this will be a lymphatic vessel. These are the vessels coming off the lymph node. Then, over here, this is, uh, this is an axillary, um, axillary node, axillary, A-X-I-L-L-A-R-Y axillary which means armpit so these are the axillary nodes here you can also see their lymphatic vessels that are coming off them then we have the small intestine a small intestine we have the large intestine everything brownish here is large intestine then we have the stomach this is the stomach we have the pharynx this is the pharynx over here. Then we have the spleen. This is the spleen over here. Then we have your mouth right there. And then we have your nose right here. So one more time, let's go through some of the main structures of the lymphatic system. The inguinal nodes, lymphatic vessels. The auxiliary nodes and their lymphatic vessels, the small intestine, all of this is a small intestine, the large intestine, everything brownish is large intestine, then we have the appendix, this is the appendix here, this is the appendix, this portion right there, the appendix, we have the pharynx, we have the spleen right here. We have your mouth, and then we have your nose. So we'll, we'll be able to identify 
uh, level structures here that represent the uh, they are based on this model that actually are representative of the lymphatic of the lymphatic system. Now, in the um, you, what what I need you to do is you 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 need to know the uh, lymphatic structures that are inside each of these organs that have been identified that actually help that organ to carry out its lymphatic functions. So, for example, when we talk of absorption, we talk of absorption of, of food, we'll be referring to the stomach and the small intestine, referring to the small stomach and the small intestine. So, let's see, um, in our small intestine over here, in our small intestine, we have lymphoid follicles and pears patches. We have lymphoid follicles and pears patches. In the stomach, we also have lymphoid follicles and pears patches. In the large intestine, we also have lymphoid follicles and pears patches. So collectively, if you look at the stomach, the small intestine, and the large intestine, over here, they are collectively called the gastrointestinal. They are the, so they contain what we call the gastrointestinal lymphoid follicles. Then, um, in this in the spleen right here, in the spleen, we're going to have lymphoid a cluster of lymphoid follicles. But we also have in the spleen, we also have the white pulp and the red pulp. In the in the white pulp have lymphocytes and in the red pulp to have macrophages. Remember macrophages and lymphocytes, these are cells that our immune system uses to combat diseases. Then um, in our mouth behind here and in our pharynx right here, we have tonsils. These are tonsils right here. We have tonsils right here. Behind them we have tonsils. So tonsils are found where air, water, and food enter the body. Where air, water, and food enter the body. That's where we we'll find tonsils. That's where we find, we'll find tonsils right here. And the tonsils will be used, they, they used to, if water or air or food is coming in with microorganisms, they are going to be more like the first, first line of defense. Good. Then um, in the appendix right here, which is at the end of this large intestine and the appendix right here in the appendix we also have the uh, pears patches and uh, lymphatic nodules we have pears patches and lymphatic nodules right here in the right here in the appendix why right. one last time structures that we can see from these models that are associated with the lymphatic system we have the inguinal nodes and their lymphatic vessels. We have the axillary nodes and their lymphatic vessels. We have the small intestine. We have the large intestine. We have the stomach. We have the appendix right here. We have the pharynx right there. We have the spleen right here. We have the mouth and we have the nose.